Hey there, folks. I've got another screen here. Um, this is yet another ITA kit from Funny Playing here, uh, but this does have a few new features that uh, I think we should take a look at. Uh, so when you order one of these things, um, not a whole lot has changed in terms of the hardware you get. You get the laminated display assembly uh, that is already attached to the lens uh, with the ribbon cable for the backlight already uh, already plugged in there. Uh, do be careful with these because you will need to um, kind of flip this up to maneuver it with the bracket, um, which I believe comes with the kit, not the shell, but whatever. Um, also, you're going to want a laminated shell. I've got one of those here set aside. Installing this in a shell that is not laminated ready is going to be extremely difficult because this gets installed from the back, not from the front like normal uh, Game Boy Advance LCDs. Uh, so if you look at a laminated shell, you can see it's entirely cut out and, well, that's the purpose of the bracket here. Uh, but anyway, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Um, the actual included hardware is pretty pretty simple here. Um, you've got three wires for the button controls that we actually might skip this time around, even though I usually do them. Uh, you've got the two ribbon cable adapters, one for 32 pin and one for 40 pin. Uh, otherwise, they are the exact same. Um, and the bracket and then the display assembly with the ribbon on there. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, now, I have done quite a few different videos on the ITA kits, especially. There have been numerous revisions between the laminated and non-laminated versions. Here's one more. <laughs> uh, anyway, tonight's donor is going to be this thing that I found in the drawer and totally forgot about. Um, and I, there's no sense keeping it around with the new ones out. We'll get to this eventually. Um, but we can't use this one because it has no, it's got no CPU. Anyway, I'm going to pull this off and just quickly show off some of the new features with the new board. Um, well, the main new feature with the new board is that the cart slot uh, actually has gold plated pins, which is a very good thing, I think. Um, there are a few little differences in components, like it it's no longer using salvaged um, EM filters for the link port. It's using completely different ones. These should be a little bit more reliable. I think the problem was these are literally salvaged, so some of them are a little bit rusty or corroded because they've been sitting in a warehouse for 20 years. Uh, and so the solder just doesn't always take. That's why I manually touch these up and I still haven't cleaned it up, but they're still covered in flux. Um, it does work. It's just it requires a little bit of extra steps. Uh, otherwise, I think they switch to smaller LEDs for the button backlighting, which should make it a little bit easier or a little bit. Um, it should make the button feel a little bit better. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it. This is largely the same board as the old version, but this video is not about the new version. We will get to that eventually. I'll probably do a stream on it. Um, I've got two, so maybe I'll just get one prepped and then try soldering it up on stream. But anyway, moving on. Here is the board. This is the one that I did on stream, but I ended up doing the actual install with the other uh, board that I had prepped ahead of time because this had a lot of flux for me doing up the soldering, but it's clean now, so let's use it. I'm going to go ahead and plug in this OEM screen. These are not explicitly compatible with OEM screens, but it works enough <laughs> uh, that we can still get some like power baseline measurements here. Uh, plug in my game here, and the old cart slots are just Air copper. You can see mine's already getting a little bit discolored. I don't necessarily want to say it's getting corroded. It probably won't corrode. This is copper phosphate. Should be a little bit 
less susceptible than just raw copper, but it's also still copper, so eventually it might stop working. But that day is not today, so we're going to keep using it and then maybe swap the card slot out later if it comes to that. Plug that in, set to 2.4 volts. I think this, I think this motherboard can actually handle quite a bit more, but we'll not test that. Oh, I gotta solder up a speaker so we can get a baseline. Hang on. I totally forgot to do that. One moment. All right, I've got a speaker on here. Not exactly the one I wanted to use, but. It'll work for our purposes. Plenty loud too. So we've definitely got to grab a baseline for this sort of thing to see what sort of um, power usage the screen is going to use on this Game Boy because I don't have baselines for this style motherboard. This uses a completely different power supply and a completely different uh, audio amplifier. It's a lot louder. If you can't tell from the fact that I'm having to speak up. Um, but It should be fine. Uh, the numbers are going to be a little bit weird because, like I said, uh, this screen is not explicitly compatible with this motherboard, and if I just run around in this game, you can see why. Uh, oop. There it goes. Look at all that ghosting. You thought stock screens were bad before. Ugh. Oop. Well, I guess now I don't have to answer that call. <laughs> All right, out of the box, nothing configured, lights on to their default mode, volume maxed, stock screen, 2.4 volts. This console is pulling. Ooh, that is quite variable. Uh, anywhere from 151 to 180 milliamps. It's kind of variable. Um, but anyway, I know a lot of this is the speaker. So if I turn this down, The numbers change to 134 at the low end to 163 at the high end. So not nearly as bad. I'm sure we can save even more power by turning off the LEDs, but if you buy a board like this, why would you turn off the LEDs? Um, understandably, you don't need audio in every scenario, so I think it's fair to test with and without, but I think that's about it. Let me go ahead and kill that and let's try out the new screen. So I wanted to use, and ideally you should use, a funny playing speaker and I have exactly as many as I need uh, except that this is a Game Boy Color speaker, not a Game Boy Advance speaker. Game Boy Advance speakers fit in Game Boy Colors. Game Boy Color speakers do not fit in Game Boy Advance. I have a Game Boy Color somewhere with a Game Boy Advance speaker in it. I have no idea where. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll have to set that aside and get that swapped out eventually, but today is not that day. And swap this out. All of these replacement funny playing boards are 32 pin. Let's go ahead and get that plugged in. Always, my, my brain stops working whenever I think about how to plug these in. I don't know why. Like something about the 180s makes my brain stop. I don't quite get it. Cool. Let's try not shorting out the power supply with this screen. Ooh, and I've got nothing. Maybe I did already short it. Or maybe it's just a weird artifact of using the power supply. 
would not be the first time. Yeah, it's a weird artifact of using the power supply. I don't know that we can avoid that. Cart slot already dead? Or more likely is my game just dirty? Alright, so I did change the voltage. I had to bump it up to a higher voltage to get it to boot off this power supply with all of this stuff plugged in and enabled. Uh, so at 3 volts, not 2.4, 3 volts, this does change the math, at 3 volts it is pulling, uh, I saw it down to 193, max 204 milliamps, uh, so it's kind of up there. Um, you'll have to take the numbers I gave you before, multiply them to get the wattage, and then compare the wattage. Uh, this thing is pulling... 0.55 to 0.64 watts. Kind of a lot, but I don't know. Not too bad, all things considered. Uh, let's see if I can actually drop it back down now that it's on. Ooh! I dropped it a little farther than I meant to, but it's still fine. <laughs> okay, so now at 2.4 volts. There we go, we're good. Um, let's see what the milliamps are now. 241 milliamps to 267 milliamps, I see. So, kind of a lot. Not too terrible, all things considered, but kind of a lot. Um, I think we've got... Let's check out the brightness since we have a touch sensor. One... Uh, there's probably eight levels. Normal. So, at minimum brightness, 2.4 volts, this thing pulls 209 milliamps to 239 milliamps, and then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 levels, I think. Uh, maxing out at 312 milliamps with lows of 300, or 287. Oh, that wasn't the max. 9, 10, 10, it looks like. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. At 10, this thing pulls 320 to 350. 320 to 350. That's not bad. And yeah, that was the max, okay. And then I believe if we press and hold this, we should get an OSD, maybe. There it is, yeah, just kinda fussy. And yeah, 10 levels. And then we have a few other features like FRM, XST, and YST that I will explore in a little bit more detail later when I'm not trying to prevent this thing from shorting itself out. But now that we know it works, we can go ahead and continue with the install. I'm going to go ahead and put the power supply away. We won't be needing it anymore. Not for this video at the very least. And I'm going to detach up from right here. Here in there. Anyway, um, I don't recommend blowing in your cart slots, but in this case, I was blowing cat hair off the board. Uh, with one of these boards, it's actually almost silly not to wire up button controls. So 
I guess let's go ahead and do that even though this is not required and my wires are in fact entirely too long um, but it's all one to one so it should be nice and easy I think I'm gonna use shoot us I should almost use magnet wire for this nice and nice and short this looks like 28 yeah Ooh, that is way too big a solder ball Actually, I don't like that because this is going to fold down. God, that makes it even shorter. <laughs> uh, solder that in at an angle and then loop it back. There's slack if I need to do something, but otherwise, no slack that I need to worry about. Now that I have a length I'm happy with, I can just cut it and then do both at the same time. to not solder right next to this battery cover. Good way to destroy the plastic. solder right next to that plastic too. I think I actually got that one.
There we go. Button controls taken care of. Wires may be a little thick, but should be fine for our purposes. Probably better to use 30 gauge, but I didn't want to use this stuff because I don't have a wire stripper that works on it. And I didn't want to sit here struggling trying to get it to work. Got a brand new housing here. Uh, interesting to note, these don't appear to come with stickers anymore, which is a little bit of a bummer. I've got a slightly older one here that has a sticker stapled to it. Um, I personally don't care that much, but I know I'm in the minority for that, so just a heads up. Got to remove that thing. And otherwise, this is going to go together real quick at this point. If I can find my buttons that are right in front of me. About the accessory pouch, because we want the light pipe. Install your spring and thingins for the shoulder buttons. Maybe there it goes. And I'm probably getting ahead of myself by putting this in, but. interesting. There's a little center in my membrane. Alright, so now we've got to get this installed into here. The display assembly, you can just drop right in. Uh, but now we need to get bracket in and the alignment is kind of weird oh never mind it looks like the ribbon does go under the bracket that's convenient Always had mixed feelings on these brackets. It's good for what it is, but it's like the alignment is weird. Getting things seated properly is weird. I don't know. But if I flip it over, which I'm not gonna do because everything's gonna fall out, but see, everything looks to be seated approximately. In here, the seated. And drop that in. Don't forget the light pipe. Don't forget start and select buttons.
Oh, I see what's going on. Funny playing did me dirty. Um, they need to revise these ribbons. If they're going to have them taped down here, this is too long. If you look and see where my link port is lining up, you can see the motherboard is not at all in the right position. And the easiest way to fix that is to just move this. Which is definitely the easiest thing to do while trying to hold this all together. Okay. I mean, at least it's just that one little tape piece. Wow, and just like that, all of a sudden, everything seats. What a silly thing to get wrong. Did I just poke a hole in the speaker? I think I did. Very sharp tweezers. <laughs> uh, okay, I am very dissatisfied with how that fits. It does work though. All right, so in my bag of screws, I've got two short screws. These are gonna be for the motherboard. This screw hole right here, or at least try to. And this screw hole right here. hold everything in place while I screw this down because the motherboard is what holds the screen bracket in place and if that slips out it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it seated again. At least not without fully disassembling it again. Alright, there we go. Using a battery mod, um, don't forget to take the the uh, battery terminals out. Um, it's a lot easier to do that before assembling. But also, I want to tape this touch sensor down because I find that they work a lot better when taped down. Which is definitely something I should have done before getting this far. Let me get some double-sided tape. Oh, of course it's right there. One moment. All right, here we go. And all those screen centers that I save from uh, lenses and such. 
Well, this is why. You should actually size that to the sensor, don't you think? All right, so just cut off a little square. Less is more. No, peeled up a little. Well, it is what it is. Okay. Nice and tap down. One thing to note with these uh, Funny Playing replacement boards is that they do use SP power switches instead of Game Boy Advance power switches. So the alignment can be kind of funky. It does work unless you've got an out of spec part somewhere. This isn't going together as well as they usually do. Not to worry. And because we're screwing metal into plastic, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier on the motherboard, um, but all we're doing is bottoming out the screw and then backing it up a quarter turn. Oh, there's the extra motherboard screw. I thought there were supposed to be three. You can get away with two, but if you have three, you might as well use them. Installed that screw all the way. And then the black one is intended to go in the battery compartment. Be careful if you reuse screws, uh, this one especially. Um, the OEM screw is a little bit longer than the replacement one, and so it will poke a divot in the front of the housing, and you definitely don't want that on your brand new housing. I mean, 
Maybe you do. I don't know. Probably don't. So on regular nickel metal hydride batteries, it was already on. You can hear it works. Ooh, that's loud. Startled me a little bit. <laughs> um, anyway, ta-da. I thought it was select. I don't know what's going on, but I don't seem to have an OSD. And now my touch sensor isn't working either. Hmm. I don't know. Let me play with it. I'll be right back. Okay, so the problem became immediately apparent as soon as I put a game in. Um, my select button doesn't work. If I press it stupid hard, it does, but that is... I am I'm putting a lot of force into this. So I'm going to take it apart and play with it a little bit better, see if I can get that... It probably just needs to be cleaned. I don't know. Um, this board isn't exactly clean. <laughs> uh, it's been exposed and just floating around. So, yeah, I'll be back. ta -da! It was a combination of things. So, I've got OSD working. And I've got the touch screen working. And I've, most importantly, got the select button working. Um, but all I did, I just, it was exactly what I said it was. I had to wipe off the contacts, um, and the touch sensor wasn't working. I don't know exactly why this would cause it to not work, uh, but when I had initially seated the shell, it got pinched between the two halves of the shell, and, well, now that it's not pinched, it seems to work fine. So, ta-da! Anyway, uh... Before we get into all of the testing and such, um, let us do... Oop, that was weird. Let's do a few things. So first and foremost, these kits do require calibration. Um, why would I save that? I don't need that. So we're going to boot up the AGB test, AGS aging ROM here. Um, and I'm going to come up with the LCD unit checker and you can see there is quite a bit of flicker with this screen. So with this test up, this is 100% perfect for this, um, I am going to go ahead and throw the flathead screwdriver on here. This is number two size, whatever that's, whatever, for whatever that's worth. Um, and I'm going to jam this in that hole back here and slowly tweak that potentiometer, if I can find it. Maybe? Hmm. Maybe that's too big. We'll try 1 point... what was that? 1.5. Oh yeah, 1.5 brightness up and then all we do is just spin the potentiometer one way or the other way you'll know until the screen stops flickering if you go too far just back it off and go the other way nice and slow and that's it no more flicker looks a lot better now okay so next up we need to fix the alignment. I don't know why, but apparently it's not aligned by default. Uh, I'm going to bring up the 240p test suite for that. And bring up the grid option so you can see exactly 
what the alignment is currently. So I believe if we press and hold the touch sensor even well after the OSD comes up, it should reset the alignment back to defaults. No, doesn't appear to be doing that. I guess that's only for the older kits that don't have the OSD. That's kind of unfortunate. Anyway, if we bring up the OSD, we can just tweak the X position and Y position like that. X should be zero. Y I'm going to set to negative five. Yeah, negative five should be good. Negative five for Y, zero for X, and Bob Gianti. Now it's nice and aligned. And it will save these settings on a power cycle. I'm afraid to bring that up with the button combo while that's booting. And there you go. Zero, negative five. So now we can actually get on with the testing. Uh, so I don't expect this to perform that much differently than the um, original ITA kit, uh, with one exception. Uh, like you saw, there is that FRM option in the OSD now, and that does exactly what you think it does, um, except it's actually implemented. <laughs> Because uh, the first version of the 3.0 IPS kits, it wasn't implemented for whatever reason, but it was there on the OSD. Anyway, pull up the grid again. You can see nice and aligned after the power cycle still. Quickly run through these tests here. Some color bars. More color bars. Yet more color bars. See the bleed. Everything looks good. Um, and we'll check out grid scroll, nah, full screen stripes. That way you can see the scaling on the screen, which actually technically there isn't any. The screen uses a one-to-one -one scale, so for every one pixel that the GBA is putting out, the screen is also displaying one pixel. Uh, so with the vertical lines, sorry, I had to tilt it to see that. Uh, with the vertical lines, or sorry, with the horizontal lines, yeah. There we go. You can see the vertical scaling, and then with the vertical lines, you can see the horizontal scaling, and both of them at the same time. Everything looks good. Nice, even, sharp. No weird, awkward backlight bleed or IPS glow, as it's known by in some cases. Um, I don't need to do any of that nonsense. And we'll go into the shadow sprite test. So I've explained this hundreds of times at this point, probably. Um, not even an exaggeration, but here's another time. Uh, so the original Game Boy console, we're talking 1989, didn't have any way of displaying uh, transparency effects in any of the games. It, it just wasn't, the, the silicon didn't support that. There was no way to implement that sort of thing. It was a, a higher level function at the time. Um, but the pixel response of the original screens was so terrible that devs actually used that as a feature instead of a bug. And they would just flicker sprites on and off real quick to get transparency effect. And it worked really well. Well, needless to say, I have no idea if the GBA itself supports transparency in GBA mode, but the pixel response of those screens was also terrible, so devs kept doing the exact same thing. Um, and so that's what this test is doing. It's flickering this box on and off really quickly to give me a transparent effect. Uh, now the LCD kit itself has the frame blending feature on, which is taking the flickering and kind of blending every other frame together to give us a nice even effect without flicker. So if I pop open, uh, bah, 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 <laughs> uh, pop open the OSD and then switch the frame blending off, you can see without it, it's not really flickering that much, at least from certain angles it's not. Um, 
Here, this is the angle that I see the Game Boy from. It's not flickering from this angle, but straight on it does look to be flickering a little bit, and you see some uh, some lines, some horizontal lines across that sprite with how this is handled. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but it is what it is. Uh, and with the FRM feature on, it's nice, smooth, solid, no flickering. Everything works. Everybody happy. So, so far so good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, let's try... Do, 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 do. Try a few more artificial tests. So I'm going to try Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Um, and basically we're going to do the exact same test again, just with Link's Awakening in case that earlier spiel didn't really make sense to you. Maybe a little bit more familiarity will. Hey, wait a second. What happened to my save? It worked an hour ago. Wow, okay. I mean, not that I was far in the game at all, but I don't really want to go through the intro again. That's cool. Thanks, Crix. Appreciate it. Hmm, I thought you'd never wake up. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so what we're testing right now, uh, as soon as we get through this intro, I gotta talk to these people. Um, and then I'm gonna go one screen over, and we're gonna look at that little dude that's chained up in front of the house, and we're gonna look at his chain specifically. Uh, because... Oh my god, a shield! Um, because that chain uses the uh, transparency effect as well. So if we go over, you can see his chain, you can see it's not flickering at all, really. Um, I think I've FR, I must have FRM on. Uh, there's zero flicker, looks great, nice transparent, etc. Uh, pop open the OSD, flip that off, and that makes almost zero difference in this test. I know the battery's dead in this, so maybe that's how I managed to lose my save. Hey! Hey! What? want to save. Please let me save. Okay, that's still there. That was weird. I wonder if that was the EverDrive, the screen, the motherboard. I'm guessing it's the EverDrive. That's weird. Whatever, I'll worry about it later. Let's try out Zayas. So this is another game that takes heavy advantage of the um, terrible pixel response of the original Game Boys, and the entire background is a transparency layer. You can see there's a little bit of flickering. It's really not that bad with this thing. Let me pause that, pop open the OSD, flip that on again, and then if I unpause that, all of the flickering is now gone. I'm 
barely even paying attention. Anyway, looks fine. I think it's all right. I've shown this off in other videos, but just just for reference, here is the IPS 3.0, because it's three inches, not because it's V3, um, from Funny Playing. This one in particular is an engineering sample that doesn't even have the OSD implemented and thus doesn't have the FRM feature. Um, you can see how flickery this is on, <laughs> on normal screens, uh, normal IPS screens at least. So that is what the FRM is doing for you. This particular screen doesn't seem to be that susceptible to flickering, but it is what it is. Uh, let's try two more. I've got, oh, there it is. Super Mario Bros. Uh, this one is a little bit of an interesting use case. Do I have FRM on? I want it on, yes. Okay. Uh, so with this game, this is actually an NES port. Uh, the original Nintendo Entertainment System supported higher vertical resolution than the GBA did. This thing is only like 160 pixels tall and I think the NES did like 240 or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter what the specific number is. All that matters is that it was a higher resolution. Uh, so when the devs ported this game to GBA, they didn't actually resize any screen elements. They're just resizing things with a post-processing filter. Uh, so what effect that has is on, on sprites like these clouds here, these bushes, which are just green clouds, uh, the ground, all stuff like that. They're, it's constantly shifting up and down uh, as the scaling algorithm is displaying certain rows. I don't know, it's, it's kind of complicated. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it. Uh, but the result is, regardless, you get some flickering of the sprites on the screen. This is an example where things are flickering not because they are meant to be transparent, but just because sometimes things flicker in games like this. Um, other IPS screens were exceptionally susceptible to that flickering, and you'd get a little bit of image retention as a result, but I'm getting exactly zero image retention here. Not that the ITA screens were particularly susceptible to image retention, but there you go. I'll turn FRM off. I'll keep going a little bit and you can try and compare that. Looking especially at the clouds. I'm trying not to go through it too quick. You can see they are flickering more. It's, oops. This game was never really broken, in my opinion, with kits like this. And even with the... It's almost like um, there's an extra outline on some of them, sometimes. I don't know. It, it was never bad. It's just an interesting uh, use case, I guess, or example. I'd recommend flipping through some of my other recent IPS videos if you want to see how this compares on those screens. But, there you go. Not too bad. First half of that was with FRM on, second half was with FRM off. It is currently off. Um, and one more game to test. Got Mario Kart Super Circuit. I know there were some very particular, specific complaints with this game. Uh, but when you go into the character selection for races, and you hit the R button, you can make them jump. But, more importantly, if you look at the shadow when they're jumping, because that's transparent, um, you could see that the shadow has lines in it. Yes, that that was a that was a specific co complaint by name. Come on. Ah, oh, now I can't even get the OSD up. It's just cycling the touch sensor. With FRM on. Oh, come on. 
There we go. Now you can see the lines are gone. Interesting, huh? That that was it. Um, this Game Boy has the original ITA screen here. Um, no lamination, no OSD, no FRM. Uh, it is calibrated. Oh god. Okay. But this is what they used to look like. So again, I keep flipping it back and forth between me and the camera because what it looks like for me and what it looks like for the camera are two totally different things. Because of the viewing angles on these things. Uh, so yeah, that's been fixed. It seems to work pretty well. Um, I have no specific complaints with it. Uh, and even if you don't care for the FRM feature, you know, it's you, you can just turn it off. It's, in my opinion, there's zero reason to prefer the older kit over this one uh, because it has all of the exact same functionality and then some. With one potential exception, I didn't think to check this. Yeah. Okay, so one exception. You can't quickly adjust the brightness up and down by doing select L and R like you can on the old, older kit. Which is actually kind of a bummer because now you have to go into the OSD or use the touch sensor. Wherever that is. You saw it was working fine for me. I don't know what has changed. But I can still go in here and adjust it there, but there's no like quick adjust anymore. And that's actually kind of a bummer because I liked that feature. Um, I'd appreciate it if Funny Plane can add it back. In fact, I will probably give them some feedback and request it specifically. But as is, there is zero reason to install button controls because you can do everything through the touch sensor if your touch sensor works. I don't know. I could be dehydrated. I have been doing projects and such all day. I've had maybe 40 ounces of water and it's like almost 8 p.m. So that's that's on me. And that has a very noticeable effect on the performance of these, these touch sensors. Um, but either way, it is still kind of annoying. All in all though, I I have no real complaints with it. It works. It does what it says it does. Um, the FRM feature does improve some specific edge cases. Of course, if you were the type that just plays Pokemon on your Game Boy, or even more commonly from what I hear, um, the type that just builds a Game Boy to post on Instagram and then throws it on their shelf, then this isn't going to make any difference to you whatsoever. Um, all of the fee all of the fixes in this new kit uh, compared to the old kit have zero bearing on Pokemon games because Pokemon games did not use any of those effects outside of maybe a couple specific battle animations. I don't know offhand so I'd... the IT guy in me doesn't want to um, give any uh, God I'm, I'm I'm leaving myself a way out as it is. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I'm tired. I'm kind of done. Um, and I think I've covered everything I meant to cover, so I think we're good to go. Uh, I will go ahead and throw some links in the description to maybe other relevant videos that you might want to check out. Um, or otherwise links to this sort of stuff. Um, shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this stuff for me to check out. Uh, they did originally provide the GBA board that went into this thing, but I soldered on the CPU myself. Uh, they provided the housing for this and the screen kit. Um, I did buy the buttons and the membranes, but... Anyway, links in the description. Some good stuff. I will go ahead and add the power usage numbers that I measured for this GBA. I'll go ahead and add that to my spreadsheet. 
even though the numbers are going to be a little bit weird because this is not an OEM Game Boy Advance motherboard. Um, but, you know, just keep in mind, if you're checking that out, I will also go ahead and measure the screen brightness, add that to the spreadsheet. Uh, that should be pretty much universal regardless of which motherboard we're using. Um, but I also don't expect it to be different than the other ITA kits. Um, and I guess I'll go ahead and update my wiki that I maintain on all these backlight kits, also linked in the description. Um, on my older videos, I used to just link all that stuff individually, but I realized it's a lot easier to just link to my site and then just update my site whenever something changes instead of going back and changing the description on hundreds of videos. Uh, so anyway, I am trying to update those as I find them, but I'm not going to sit down and just update all of them because there's, that's just a lot, man. <laughs> I'll get to it eventually, I promise, but just be patient. In the meantime, my site is linked in the description. Go ahead and check that out. There's links to all of the stuff that I mentioned, uh, but I'll go ahead and put links to the, the products directly in the description. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for sticking with me, and uh, I'll catch you all next time.